What is going on YouTube? Mozville USA here, back with a special video, and we got this nice, sleek, sexy PS1 here, in a ghost case. Got this from uh, Puerto Rico or something on eBay, it's like a hundred some odd bucks. Very expensive shell, uh, but I think it looks neat. And we've got this right here, X Station. So uh, we're going to be installing this. And what this is, in case you don't know, it's pretty much uh, the newer solution to the PSIO, where the PSIO would go in the back here. This shell doesn't allow for the expansion port. Uh, but I do have one. That's where that would go, and it would uh, read from an SD. Whereas this is going to straight up replace the disk drive. And we also have this nice little 3D printed thing from Laser Bear Technologies here. There's an SD card reader that goes straight to the X station. So we don't have an, a big gaping hole. So I don't know what I'm doing. We're going to have to figure this out as we go. Uh, so we're going to tear this apart and I'm going to look up an install guide. Okay, so I've taken it apart to the main board here. We've got a PU18, which is one of the compatible board revisions here. And we're going to need to lift up several pins on this chip here. So I'll probably cruise on over to the microscope. All right, guys, so we're gonna be going over um, Pulling these pins up. Now, unfortunately, I had to cut up this footage quite a bit because my stupid head got in the way. But I have two footage from two different installs. Um, this is the after I have a bit more experienced version. Um, but we'll see how much of this becomes actually useful. So the idea is we go through and we tin everything up. Uh, we tin up all of these legs. I like using this curved tip here. And once you tin everything up, you heat the pads, not the pins, and you lift it up with the X-Acto knife. And then I want to throw, I'll have thrown up a image of uh, all the pins that need to be lifted. Just make sure you count them appropriately. And once I lift the pins, I like to bend the legs onto themselves, uh, back onto the chip, so there's no risk of it uh, going down and shorting out and touching the uh, touching anything else you can get them nice and clean and re honestly it's just satisfying to uh, lift those pins back up so you lift the pad and you bend it up like that simple as that um, don't lift uh, don't heat the leg and um, and lift he uh, heat the actual pad if you heat the uh, the leg, there's a good chance that um, you won't get the solder fully molten on the pad, and then you just rip the pad. Um, it might not be an issue um, with it functioning, but ideally, you don't lift the pads, obviously. And just in case you want to restore this one day, you know, a new mod comes out, and you just... Reattach the pins. I've already tested um, with the legs back just for the lulls, like bending the legs and then um, re reattaching them all um, for this footage specifically. Uh, and it doesn't look the prettiest, but it's pretty simple to do and works totally fine. Uh, you will likely, when you pull those legs up, a lot of times they will uh, bend into the next leg. Sometimes you get soldered to it and it's a little bit messy, uh, heating it up and straightening everything out, but it's perfectly doable. My stupid head, dude, <laughs> this sucks. I'm getting used to the new, the new camera here and, uh, really had to, had to get in there with my eyeballs and totally blocked totally block the shots but don't worry I've got more footage from under the microscope from my first install that isn't uh, totally sabotaged like this but 
We'll be showing that off in a moment here. Yeah, that's pretty funny. I went back specifically to get better footage and <laughs> uh, blocked it with my head. And yeah, cleaning it up with IPA. It looks beautiful, man. Let's get to the microscope footage. We can actually see what the hell's going on. All right, so here's the microscope footage from my first install. And I, this isn't the best tip to use, but it, it did get the job done. You heat the pad. You want a f much finer tip than what I'm using here, just to make sure you're only just heating that pad. But, uh, but yeah, you heat the pad. You lift the leg with the X-Acto knife. It's that simple. I've seen a lot of people doing like threads. The main reason I wanted to redo this footage was my the first one I did. I didn't have the technique down, and as you can see, I lifted that uh, that pad along with that leg, um, and it wasn't an issue at all. It's just uh, you know not ideal. That one's going to be an X station uh, forever. I could jump it if I ever wanted to, not have it be an X station anymore. And, revert it back to stock but um but yeah ideally you keep the pads intact heat the pad lift the leg and it's much much easier with a finer finer point uh soldering iron than the one i'm using this one's a bit more uh, unwieldy to work with. Adding more flux here. Also, a fresh blade is really beneficial. This one's got a bit of solder on it, a little dull. Uh, I could have saved myself a lot of trouble by using a newer blade on this. There it is. And I know there's techniques where people like use wire and thread the legs, pull them up that way. You can give that a shot, but um, it's really not that bad, dudes. Um, just, uh, just heat the pads, lift the legs. Tin them up first, you'll be fine. Okay, so next up we're scraping some of these little vias here. This is where the X station PCB um, gets soldered to the board. A couple of the, the these spots here. We're gonna want to scrape with the Exacto knife, scrape and tin. Um, it's important you do this before installing the PCB. Otherwise, uh, it's gonna be much more of a pain in the ass getting in there and scraping. You really gotta scrape up some of that solder resist first. As you can see, I'm turning that via into a nice meaty solder joint there. Looks very nice. We got another one here. It's scraped up, tinned up. Bada bing, bada boom. Easy peasy. And we've got a little uh, resistor here to remove. It's as simple as just tinning both the legs and flowing it off the board. You just came on in here with some flux. Tinned her up. Tinned her up. Heat up both sides and it'll come right off. Nice and pretty. Clean up those pads for no good reason other than to just make them uh, look nice. 
And last but not least, we got to do this PCB install here. And uh, this is just as simple as lining it up and soldering everything in place. All those little yellow dots there are points on the PCB that need to be soldered to the board. So uh, we've already tinned up the vias. So really all we got to do is put that, uh, put that PCB in place, flux it up, and uh, tin all of those points. So... So what we're doing here, sorry about the glare there, that's a little rough. Um, but once you get it lined up, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just really want to make sure everything's lined up at least on one side. Uh, you can lock lock it in somewhere. You can, you'll still be able to manipulate it a little bit. Um, but before locking anything else in, I would recommend uh, making sure everything's lined up it's not difficult to get it lined up properly it's just it's just one of those things that where uh, you don't want to solder up half of it and and see that something's misaligned I have to jump wires or end up shorting something out just line it up tin it up and any of those through hole ones um, you're going to want to add a good bit of solder to I'm going to do that last. Get the, uh, get the corners worked out first. Just so you know it's nice and flush. Apply pressure if it's coming up a little bit. Uh, you want this nice and flush on the board. Uh, get all them corners. And then uh, work inwards. Definitely a very simple and convenient, easy, uh, easy job to do. I think anyone could really uh, get one of these, get this PCB section uh, handled. It's just they made this, uh, they made this install very, very easy. The pins might freak some people out, but heat the pads, lift the legs. It's so all you got to do. It's very simple. And I'm sorry that footage was, uh, wasn't the best there. I literally spent a couple hours like doing it again, even though I didn't need to on like a different console and, uh, to get better footage. And it was turned out in the editing room here. I'm realizing that footage is really compromised by my head. And if you use flux like me, you got to come in here. Use some IPA, clean it up. I've got a dedicated uh, flux toothbrush. You don't want to use. It gets a little grimy, you know. You don't want to use that toothbrush to clean, uh, you know, non-flux stuff. Then you might just be adding old flux to, uh, you know, something where you're trying to get dust off or something, but. Yeah, nice and pretty. And then we've got one wire to install. A little pad, the APLL pad. Gets wired up. Gets wired up directly next to that crystal oscillator near where we uh, removed that resistor. It's like one pad above the resistor that we had attached there or removed some fluxing up the pad coming on in tinning it up connect the wire first Makes it much easier to get the get the wire nice and flush. The pad on the PCB is way more forgiving. And there it is. Nice and easy. Clean her up and we're almost out of the woods here, dudes. 
So there's one little bit that needs to get cut on the case. Snip, snip. You're gonna want that there. Snip it off with some flush cuts. Super simple. We hook up the ribbon cable to the new PCB. And that guy goes in that little slat there uh, by where the disk drive used to plug in. The cable fits in there perfectly. And you just line everything up and screw it on in. And take the X station, plug her up. Okay, and just real quick, I want to go over um, the the folds here for the ribbon cable on the SD card mount from Laser Bear. Um, so it's plugged in, and here's what we got here: just one hard fold, angled like this. You want it to be routed underneath the X station. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of forward uh, pressure coming up. You want it sitting flush in here before you go ahead and lock the top in. So we got that hard fold there. And then the X station itself. Let's see what folds I got going on here. So we got it angled here angled there two hard folds um, you can just get this in loosely that's what I did um, just kind of loosely fold it and then once you get it placed on there then you can do the hard fold and you're probably gonna want to do this hard fold before you put it on there so it's sitting nice and f flat it's not it has no pressure being pushed up there come on in Plug this guy in. Oh, I'm real jacked up on coffee, dudes. So we got a fold in the back. You can plug it in. And you might want to give it one more crease, like right back here. Once everything's situated. And there it is. It's sitting nice cleanly there's no pressure pushing it up no resistance and uh yeah it's just chilling there nice and easy nice and beautifully um okay let's carry on and very quickly i'm just going to go over the sd card setup here uh here is my x station and this is a 400 gigabyte i believe let's go to properties i forget what am i rocking Use space, yeah, 400 gigabyte SD card. Um, just out of the box, uh, formatted XFAT. I believe I used, I for, I actually, I think I formatted it with SD card formatter. I believe that's recommended. So just give it a format first once you pull it out of the box with SD card formatter. And uh, yeah, all you gotta do after that is you're going to go on the root, you're going to go to a new folder, and you're going to create a folder called 00x station. And then you're going to come on to the GitHub here, and you're going to go to the latest releases. And I need to update mine anyway, so this came out five days ago. And I want to be nice and ready for when I get my brand new Memcard Pro with a nice little, uh, it's going to show the game IDs on the memory card itself, which will be pretty rad. So you get the update file here. we got two files, loader and update.bin. 
And then we're going to come on over to our SD card. And we're going to replace, or in your case, you're going to just add these guys to that folder. You won't have the config, you won't have the games, all of that uh, yet. But it's all good. And then as for games, I just put my whole collection in the root of the SD. Uh, the documentation says splitting it up will help it uh, load faster or find games faster. But really, it, it's been quite smooth with everything on the root. And one of the nice things, too, about the X station is it doesn't require you to... Um, format it as a uh, single bin and queue almost everything else in existence can't handle the standard ps1 rom format that you'll get in all the various redump rom sets which is a queue and most of the time there'll be about at least more than one bin sometimes it's just one but there's the multi-track uh bins which aren't compatible with most things like PSIO, etc. But luckily, you don't need to worry about it with the X station. You just drag it on over to the root of your SD card. As long as it's a bin queue format, you're good to go. It might support other formats too, but for the most part, bin queue is the norm here. So, uh, yeah, don't worry about um, condensing your multi bin games. Totally fine. And, uh,. Yeah, let's hook up the uh, SD card to the X station and give it a whirl. Well, here we are. Booting up the X station. Keep in mind the lid does need to be closed otherwise it won't boot because it uh because of the sensor thinking that there's nothing in there so here we are i've already got my games list configured, but yours will not by default this is your first time starting it up so i'm hitting triangle here and i got the new firmware files if yours is out of the box yours will need an update as well so we're going to go ahead and update the firmware press start and we're going to go ahead and wait for this to complete so the X station updated and it went ahead and reset itself very nice so we're going to hit triangle again um, go ahead turn it to NTSC And you can go ahead and tweak uh, the display here, get the dark theme or blue theme. Let's try inverting that. Okay. That's fine. And if you've added your games, you're going to want to go to this refresh games list here. Uh, you need to do this in order for your games to uh, compile and show up on the main screen. Okay, so it might take a while to um, do the scan, but once it's done, it just depends on how much you got, but once it's done, we got this nice little list here. You know what, let's try this again. Dark theme. Save and exit. I like that. That's nice. So, up and down. Goes game by game. Left and right. Our R1 and L1 will quickly scan through it. So let's fire up a game so you can see what's going. We're going to pick the best game ever made uh, for any system. Pepsi Man. If this doesn't make you want to drink a Pepsi, then you know what? You're, there's something wrong with you. This is the thing. Ah, 
hell yeah. So we're gonna give this a test. Check out the loads. Load times. We got some Pepsi going there. That's pretty good. Hey, let's start the game. Hell yeah. <laughs> I like that. I love that guy. This song is rad. I can't think of a better song. Alright, loading time. Into the abyss. And here we go. We're off. We're running. So the goal here is to uh, get the Pepsis. Oh, shit. And I kind of love the, uh, the 2D, 3D hybrid here. You can kind of bonk off the cars. It's like a skateboarding game, kind of. Oh, fuck. It's like a no comply on a on a vehicle. I'm getting wrecked. Fuck you, lady. Give me the Pepsis. So, the, what you really gotta do... How do you duck? I don't know how you duck. What you really gotta do is get the Pepsis. It's like Pepsi man likes Pepsi, so you gotta get the Pepsis. It's very important. And then once you're... Oh, the controls invert. And you're in this thing. Which is no good. Let me out of here. Oh, shit. There we go. Okay, good. I'm getting wrecked. But I'm also getting Pepsis. Now, I don't know if I've stressed this, but you really got to get those Pepsis. Oh. Well, that's it, dudes. That's the X Station, and that's Pepsi Man. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, next up on the list, I'll show you how I set up this um, DC or PS1 Digital, the HDMI kit for the PS1. 10 out of 10, would install again. See you on the next one.